What is up to all my upcoming ClickFunnel gurus? Uh, it is I, Charles, aka the Bearded Guru. So, um, in this video, I wanted to explain how I was able to add the Facebook like element to my ClickFunnels page. So, jump right into it. The first thing you need to do, you need to have an app inside of Facebook. If you go to developers.facebook.com slash click uh, quick starts we'll just go there so that from here you'll choose which platform you want to get started on um, for this if for this particular element you're not creating an actual app but you got to have an app ID um, inside of Facebook developers so that you can have access to it so we'll go to website here um, you can create any existing one. Um, so what I'm going to do is add uh, the Guru's Den and create a new Facebook app ID. Um, is this a test version? No. Category. This is going to be apps for pages. Uh, create an app ID. So now once that's set up, this is going to give you your actual app ID. Uh, your your JavaScript code now we don't need to worry about this information here for the the like and share button element because um, ClickFunnels already has the Facebook code um, integrated inside the site uh, that's why we we're able to give you you know you're able to use the uh, the Facebook comment element that we have um, but so we don't need to really worry about capturing this um, what we do want to put in here is the URL of our site. So if you're doing this for a, um, if you're doing this for like a Facebook group, like mine is here is uh, slash the bearded guru. So what I'm going to do is just grab this information because once somebody likes or subscribes, I want them to be liking this page and subscribing to this page. So I'm going to grab this information. I'm going to copy it. I'm going to run over here into the site URL and I'm going to paste that in. I'm going to click next. Oh, wait a minute. I forgot. For this one, you want to use your domain name. Because um, this, this, I apologize, this actually attaches to the, the app itself. So my domain is HTTP, HTTPS, thebeardedguru.com. Now, <clears throat> You know, yours might not have an SL cert on it, so you can do HTTP. It, it doesn't matter. So we click on next. <clears throat> and this gives you some more um, information that you can test on your page to make sure that you have your JavaScript code properly inserted. Um, you know, if you're doing your own website, then I would definitely say you need to test this to make sure. But I can already tell you, inside of ClickFunnels, it's already done for you, so you don't need to test this. So now we, what we need to do is decide what we want to do. Um, do we want to have a share dialogue? Do we want to do have a, um, a login? Uh, what we're going to be working with, though, in this uh, tutorial is going to be social plugins. Because all we're worried about is getting the like, share, and send button. So if we click here, now we're going to be using this app for um, a web application, not an Android or an iOS. So if we click web here, this is going to take us to the like button configurator. <clears throat> so the URL to like, this is going to be the like button, or this is going to be the page that when somebody clicks like, that it's going to actually attach to. So here, you can take your, um, you can take your Facebook uh, URL for your fan page or your product page or you know your pet your, you know your your. Uh, your public uh, public person or you know whatever you grab the URL here copy it and then we're going to come over here <clears throat> and we're going to paste it inside the URL the like now we can give it a width that we want to use um, I would do you know for my example inside my page here I actually did 200 um, pixels here with you know, you can play around with it depending on how much space you have to play in. You know, do what you want to do. Uh, but if you throw the 
the, if you throw a pixel width in there, you don't have to add pixel to the end. Just give it a, a, um, a whole number there. Now for layout, you can choose to have it either standard. Now this will give you the like, share, and this will show you your Facebook friends that have liked. Um, you can do the standard there. You can do the box count, which is, you know, very plain Jane. Uh, you can do just box content. And so it'll give, what is it, box count. It'll give you like and share and then give you the little number of how many people have liked your page. Or you can just do the button. So it depends on what you want to do. Um, I'm going to go with standard on this. And then you can choose whether it says like or recommend your choice. Um, like means you liked it. Recommend means you're, you know, you're recommending it uh, to your, your uh, wall. You can choose to show your friends' faces or to even remove the um, include button if you choose. So it's, it's, this is your setup. This is how you want to do it. Go for it. Knock yourself out. After you get through setting it up, though, all you need to do is click on this get code. Now, like I said, our information, we've already, or inside of ClickFunnels, there, this um, JavaScript is already implemented, so you don't need to re-add it. So we're just going to grab this uh, code here, which is basically a div, and we're going to go inside of our page here, and we're going to create a new custom JavaScript HTML element. So we'll add that to the page. We click on the element, and then over here in the box, we're going to control V or command V if you're on one of those crapple devices. Once you have this information in, that's pretty much all you have to deal with. So we can save this. We can go preview it. And there you go. Your like button and share button has now been implemented into your ClickFunnels page. Now you can throw some styles on this to kind of, you know, pull it off the side, to center it up. Um, you can do that within a div if you just add a style tag. So we'll do style. So we'll do style. And then we're going to do equals. And we're going to open quotations. Now what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to add some padding to get that element off the right there. So we're going to add some padding, and we don't want to give it any top or bottom, because uh, in this example, we don't really need to space it anymore from the top and bottom. But what we do want to do is center it up inside of that, this, this square here, uh, or rectangle, however you, you know. You want to get the information that's been centered up on the page. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to add zero because I don't want to give any top or bottom to the, uh, I don't want to give any padding to the top and bottom. But I do want to give, uh, I believe, we'll go with 50 pixels for left and right. And then I'll do a semicolon, and then I'll close out the quotation there. So now you'll see like the blue lines have gone away because now this code is in proper format. Always make sure you end your CSS attributes with a semicolon, oops, and make sure when you done when you are done with your style tag here, you close out the quotation, or it'll break your code. And I will not be responsible for that. Okay, <laughs> so we saved this information. We're going to open this up, scroll down a little bit, and so now you can see it's pushed off here. It's now a little bit closer. We want to give it a little bit more. Uh, just so that we can kind of center it up a little bit better. Now, in this example here, see, I have an actual height in this box set, but what I want to do, um, just showing you the example, we're going to give it a little bit of bottom, so it'll take bottom padding, so we can take it off the uh, to where it's not sitting right there on the bottom, just for um, just for you know trying to explain what's going on here. So we go back into our page here. So we're going to give it, let's go with 70 for the pixels for up and down, or excuse me, for left and right. And we want to give it, now, the padding CSS attribute here, padding can take four arguments. 
The reason being is because you have top, right, bottom, left. So if you look at here, padding, the, the CSS attribute padding itself can hold a value for top value, right value, bottom value, left value. Now you can explicitly tell it you want padding dash top and you can only affect the top or padding dash right and that'll only affect the right, etc. But I don't want to add a whole bunch more um, information here that I don't need. So I'm just going to use the padding um, tag or the padding attribute um, and give it its four arguments so that we can lift that, lift that bottom um, away from it so it's not sitting right there. So what I'm also going to add is let's give it 20 pixels for the bottom and then 70 pixels for that left. So once we have that set up, so like I said, this is your four values. This is your top. This is your right. This is your bottom. This is your left. So we save this. We open her up and see what she looks like. There you go. That looks a lot better. Now, because I'm in incognito, I'm not signed in to Facebook. It's not going to show the faces. But if I preview this in a browser, I'm already logged in. You'll see. Now you can see the faces, and this looks pretty good. I mean, I could be a little bit more picky, but this just this go this this explains it. All right, so. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. This is how you add the like and share button to your Facebook pages. Um, please like and subscribe. Let me know that you are enjoying these little tutorial videos that I do. Um, let me know what more do you want. Let me know what you're looking to find or let me know what you need help with. And I will definitely try to kick out a video and let you know. Um, so I hope you guys are going to San Diego. Um, I'm telling you these events are awesome so if you're not making this one definitely make plans to make the next one Russell goes all out and I tell you it's a blast especially the speakers that come in it's gonna be good times so if you're gonna be there look for the bearded guru I'll be looking for your faces you guys take care peace